Three months ago, nomads found her dying in northern Siberia. Walker, Kate Walker, born in New York in the United States. She had an American passport on her. She showed up at the clinic last week. She's recovering. She's fine. You're certain, Olga Efimova. You have to keep her there until we arrive. I will do what it takes. You can count on me, Colonel. Hello, Kate Walker. Uh, hello. My name is Kirk, Kate Walker. Kirk of the Yukol tribe. Do you remember the Yukols? Where are we? My memory's all mixed up. There was a terrible blizzard with snow and ice, and then nothing. We are in the clinic of Dr. Zamyatin, in the town of Valsambor. How did I end up here? We Yukos migrate with our snow ostriches to the sacred lands. It's a long journey. A very special journey. One month ago, we found you dying on a riverbank there in the north. We took you in and our shaman cared for you. Afterwards, we continued our journey. And today... We are both here to finish getting better. You lost a leg. It was an accident, you know. Some people don't like nomads like us. But don't worry about me. Dr. Zamiatin asked a master craftsman from Velsambor to make me a new leg. And he's going to put it on me when it's ready. It will be like a brand new leg. Why are you tied to that bed? That was the decision of Madame Olga, Dr. Zamutin's assistant. She says I'm too restless, and it's the only way to make sure I get better. Apparently, it's going to take a long time to make my artificial leg. And in the meantime, my people are without a guide and are waiting for me, with the herd, so we can continue. The Yugals I've met didn't speak my language anywhere near as well as you. I'm very impressed. From time to time, missionaries and merchants came through our village. I learned very quickly, Kit Walker. It's important if I am to guide my people. Uh... I don't mean to be rude, Kirk, but aren't you a bit young for that? The spirits do not take age into account when they choose a chief for the Yukols. And the spirits are very wise. They do not make mistakes when they choose the one who will guide our people on the sacred migration. Why do the Yukols make the journey? My people live in symbiosis with the great snow ostriches, Kate Walker. Their wool protects us from the cold. Their excrement feeds our crops, and their meat feeds us. They are also our mounts and beasts of burden, so we must follow them wherever they go. And do they migrate because of the weather? No, Kate Walker. They go to the sacred lands to reproduce. It is an event that only occurs a few times per century. For the Yukols, it is rare to be able to boast of having participated in more than three migrations during one's lifetime. Well, Kirk, I'm delighted to have made your acquaintance. I guess I have to go tell the staff that I'm awake, I feel fine, and I have no intention of hanging around here. Of course, Kit Walker. I'm sure someone will be in the yard. Maybe even Madame Olga. Hello? 
Is anybody there? I don't think anybody heard you, Kate Walker. Try using the call button that's located next to the door. Nothing. It doesn't work, Kirk. Hmm. I think I saw some of the staff using it the other day. Take a good look at the mechanism, Kate Walker. Maybe you can find a way to get it working again. This diagram shows how to turn the call button on, but I can't do anything until I can get at the internal mechanism. Search the room. I'm sure you'll be able to find something you can use to open it up with. That should do the trick quite nicely. Now try to use it to see if you can repair the call button. Right. Let's see if I can repair the mechanism. If you're not sure, Maybe the diagram you saw earlier might help. Finally. Right, now I just have to find a supervisor. Well done, Kate Walker. I'm going to have a bit of a rest now. Please try to come back and say goodbye to me before you go. Go hold your head under the ice water in the fountain, Nikita. That'll clear up your damn headaches. Not his time. Ah, you're finally awake, number 10. What can I do for you? Well, it seems to me that I'm cured. And now I'd like to be on my way. Given your condition, that would seem somewhat premature and perhaps even unreasonable, Number 10. I am not a number. My name is Kate Walker. I would appreciate it if you would call me by my name, Doctor. There's a perfect example. That aggression boiling up within you. I'm afraid that it may be a significant traumatic after-effect. So you're refusing to let me leave? Oh, no, of course not, miss. I have no intention of abusing any of the prerogatives of my position. Nonetheless, first you must submit to a series of tests that are designed to demonstrate that you have fully recovered. You understand. Please, sit down. I... on that? Yes, yes. Don't be afraid. What the... Don't worry about these restraints. Merely a simple formality that's part of the protocol that Dr. Olga, our supervisor, has implemented. Right. I do believe that we can begin. 
Now, be so kind as to state your first and last names, age, and place of birth, please. My name is Kate Walker. I was born in New York, and I'll be 30 this year. Good, good, miss. Up until now, my device would seem to corroborate what you say. You're using a lie detector? It's procedure. Please stop worrying and talk to me instead of your friends and family. Are you on good terms with them? I can't do anything because of his lie detector. I should tell him the truth. Do I need to repeat the question? No. I cut off with them. I haven't had any news from my mother for weeks. And Dan, my fiancé, left me for my best friend Olivia. You seem to be basking in this chaos and anarchy, Miss Walker. Is this inclination for disorder connected to this Hans Vorlberg and Oscar? You spoke about them at length while you were delirious. If I don't tell him everything, his lie detector might pick it up. Answer me, please! Oscar was a kind of automaton. Very special. Very sophisticated. You know, sometimes it was as if he was almost alive. He was designed by Hans Varroberg. Hans was a genius. The last of a long dynasty of precision machinery manufacturers. We went on a very long journey together. Then we landed on a small island in the sea called Siberia. Hans knew that there was still a herd of mammoths there that had survived from prehistory. Hans was obsessed by mammoths. Mammoths? Imagine that. It's a strange story, I admit. But I assure you it's the truth, Doctor. To be honest, what I'm interested in, Miss Walker, is that during your travels you were in contact with the Yukul people, the nomads who brought you here to Velzenbor. In your opinion, what should we fear from such a primitive tribe of savages who understand neither law nor border? Refusing civilization and settlement. His insidious innuendos are unbearable. Do I need to rip? I think, Doctor, that the Yukuls live in harmony with nature, time, and space. They have no real reason to change the way they live. Now that is an example of typical American idealism. Maybe you should go back to New York right away. I'm sure your brilliant ideas will be justly appreciated there. I don't intend on going back. Not now. Later. And maybe never. So you intend to continue your journey through our country? A hazardous undertaking with neither goal nor destination. Pity for a brilliant New York attorney who seemed to have a gleaming future. That's not for you to decide, Doctor. For the rest, I think I have demonstrated throughout this interview that I present no psychological after-effects from my injuries. I would therefore like you to authorize my release now. Of course, of course. Do calm down, Miss Walker. I'm sorry, but I'm not used to being interrogated like this. Some years ago, I would have interrogated you in a very different manner, Miss Walker. I grant that I may still feel some nostalgia for the good old traditional methods. You're one of the very last representatives of a world that is fast disappearing, Miss Walker. A disordered world that no one will miss. This key is much like you, unstructured and uncontrollable. If you're able to find a way to use it to leave this floor, then you shall have proved that you are permanently cured. I would like to get my things back before I leave. You will find them there.
What kind of twisted mind came up with this? Turn around. Hello. And who might you be, miss? Yeah. Who are we speaking to? Uh, my name is Kate. Kate Walker. Kate. Kate Walker. That doesn't sound too local. Yeah. So how did you get here, Kate? Kate Walker? The Yukos brought me here. The Yukos? They're nothing but chicken thieves. A whole bunch of scumbag morons doing nothing but infesting the streets of Valsambor. Yeah. Now they've come here to do their dirty work. Ah, uh, you mean Kirk, I suppose. For 20 years we've been in this clinic. Since we got back from Baranor. Listen, this place has always actually been a quality establishment. I don't mind admitting. So we were pretty disappointed when we heard that Madame Olga is now letting in those degenerate scumbags from up north. Come on, Anton, come on. Madame Olga knows very well what she's doing. She must have her reasons for letting those midgets in here. Baranur? What's Baranur? A place. It's a goddamn hellhole. What are you talking about, Anton? That's all I have to say about it, Kate. Kate Walker. Can't stir up the past. So have you really been here for 20 years? Yeah. At first, we were kept for observation with some of our buddies after that damn mission to, uh, Baranur. Leon and me, we're almost the last ones still here now. We don't know what happened to the others. Gotta say, some of them were pretty bad. Worse than us. Some guys who got it pretty bad. Fortunately, Madame Olga looks after us right. They look after us nicely here. Yeah. She looks after us good. She's a real lady, if you want my opinion. Can you tell me where the exit is, please? It's there. But you won't be able to leave until you've had a meeting with Dr. Mongo Ling in his office. Yeah, he's the one who knows if you're cured or not. I'll be leaving you then, gentlemen. Goodbye. See you around, Kate. Kate Walker. Yeah, see you around.
But... What on earth's wrong, Miss Walker? I don't understand. The key. It didn't work. I did warn you, you know. You can't be at all well enough yet to deserve to be released already. But... But what do I have to do? Why don't you go back and have a lie down in your room, so you can continue your convalescence? But look at me. I feel fine. You have to let me go. Impossible, Miss Walker. The rule is very clear. Only those patients who are capable of opening the door may leave this floor. Right. Since you won't help me, I want to speak with your superior, Dr. Olga. You can do that when she comes by to see you for her daily visit. But please don't count on me to disturb her before then. There's a problem with the key. That's obvious. I need to find out where it comes from. I already know that everything works here. Let's check the key. These holes. It looks like something's been removed from the key. No doubt about it. My key's been deliberately damaged. I need to find a perfect copy if I want to be able to repair it. Ah, Kate. Kate Walker. How's it going? You look kind of down. Well, I had a problem. I bet you went and flunked Dr. Mongo Ling's test, right? But don't go flipping out over it, Kate. Kate Walker. I could never figure out how I was supposed to pass those damn tests either. I did fine in the interview, and he gave me the key to the exit. The problem is, I can't open the door. It doesn't work. Sometimes things just aren't obvious around here. I gotta tell you, Kate. Kate Walker. Leon, who is a lot sneakier than me. A few years ago, he got through the interview okay, and also actually got that damn key from the doctor. Yeah, but I never got the damn door open. Same as you. There's something really wrong with this place. That weird interview we have to go through doesn't surprise you? And all of that just to get a key that doesn't open anything? Dr. Olga told us lots of times, Kate. Kate Walker. In this place, talking bad about the protocol is proof you're really sick. Yeah. Dr. Olga knows what she's doing, and you can really trust her. When we're better, our minds will be able to understand how the key works, you see?
I see. According to the picture, there's a pin missing. I need to find a way to fix it. But how am I going to manage it? How are you, Kate Walker? Is your departure from the clinic imminent? I'm afraid not. You seem upset. What's wrong? I have to use a kind of key to open a door and finally get out of this place. It's a kind of a test, you know? A test that I passed, but the key didn't work. And when I compared it with an original, I saw it had been sabotaged. I'm getting the impression they're trying to keep us here by any means, Kirk whether we want to stay or not. That's a serious accusation. Are you sure? I'm not sure of what I saw, even if it seems totally crazy. I just hope I'm not losing my mind. You seem entirely sound of mind to me, Kit Walker. I wouldn't worry. So you share my suspicions? It's true that I've been very weak since I began Madame Olga's treatment. But she says that it's normal. She calls it temporary secondary effects. We really need to get out of here, Kirk. Unfortunately, I cannot undertake the long migration of the ostriches without the mechanical leg, Kate Walker. But you, on the other hand, you can leave. But how? Show me the model of the key you told me about. Hmm, that's what I thought. With this, my tribe Smith should be able to repair your key. If, of course, you find a way to get it to him. I doubt they have a postal service here. Go on to the balcony. Our shaman's messenger is never very far. I use it to communicate with my people. You can give it the key. It'll take it to my tribe Smith. Got it. Thank you so much, Kirk. Hey you! Birdie! Birdie! I've got something for you! About that bird, Kirk. I must be doing something wrong. It won't come to me when I call it. It's true that the old owl is a bit of a lunatic. Have you tried to get it to land on the balcony? No but I don't see what I can use for that. Look around the yard, Kate Walker. You may find something that might interest the board. Why not? I'll give it a shot. Thank you for your help, Kirk. This key. I wonder if...
You just turn the key to activate it. The owl flew away with the key, Kirk. That's good news, Kate Walker. Now we only need... Kirk. What's wrong? Do Dr. Olga's treatment. Kirk. Kirk. Can you hear me? Wake up. Come, come. No need to be alarmed, Miss Walker. Who are you? And what have you done to Kirk? You're the one who put him in this torture device. Calm down, Miss Walker. I'm Dr. Olga Efimova. You're- I don't care who you are. Bring Kirk round. Immediately. Fainting is a secondary effect inherent in the treatment, Miss Walker. Nothing more. In medicine, despite any discomfort, protocol must be respected. Oh, you mean that horrible mechanical bed where that poor boy is waiting for a prosthesis that never comes? That's protocol? And I suppose the same is true for the absurd interrogation I had to go through. You seem to have developed a singular paranoia since you came out of the coma. When we get the chance, I'll look into it. But for now, I'm going to ask you to please leave. I have to administer the next stage of the treatment to your young friend. That woman doesn't intimidate me. If I ask to be released, she can't stop me. Did you hear me? Dr. Efimova, I demand to be released from this clinic. And trust me, I will be denouncing the curious way you've treated Kirk and your other patients. You have a very unique way of practicing medicine. I find your defiance troubling, Miss Walker. I'm responsible for ensuring your recovery goes well. Of course, I can only strongly disapprove of a premature release. I'm not interested in your opinion. Let me leave this instant. Fine. Unfortunately, I cannot prevent you from leaving us. But please, please assuage my professional conscience before you go, and let me check your pulse.
What the? It's for your own good, Miss Walker. Believe me, you must receive treatment, whether you like it or not. I can't believe Dr. Olga drugged me. That woman is completely insane. The Yukels did a great job. The key should work now. Kate Walker. Kirk! How do you feel? Not very well, I'm afraid. We've got to get you out of that horrible woman's grasp. Once we get out of here, I'm going to denounce her to the authorities. Trust me. The authorities don't care what happens to the Yukals, Kid Walker. Look at what they did to my leg. No way I'm leaving here without knowing what's going to happen to you. The best thing, Kid Walker, is for you to go along. And if you really want to help me, once you are outside, go to Valsambor and try to recover my prosthesis from the craftsmen. If you bring it back to me, Dr. Zamiatine will put it on, and I will be able to go back to my tribe. Can we trust Dr. Zamiatine? I'm not so sure when I see what this clinic is like. The man has always been a friend to the Ukols, and I'm sure he'll be able to help you leave the hospital and find the craftsmen in Valsambor. Okay. I promise to come back as soon as I can with your prosthesis, Kirk. Until then, hang in there. Thank you, Kate Walker. And may the spirits be with you. If it's for a regular checkup, the doctor's offices are behind the reception area. Ah, hello, Miss Walker. 
How very delightful to see you up and about. Even if I really have to admit that I'm a bit surprised, our dear Dr. Olga painted a far darker picture of your current state of health. Perhaps you should go upstairs more often to check on the condition of your patients, Doctor. You would see for yourself what Olga and Dr. Mangling are putting them through. Good Lord! What do you mean? You need to understand that Olga isn't the virtuous doctor that you seem to think. That woman spends all her time looking for unbelievable problems in her patients and makes diagnoses that she justifies through bizarre tests with systematically skewed results. And that's not to mention the treatment she's putting poor Kirk through. Listen to me, Miss Walker. I know that waking up after a prolonged period in a coma is difficult. In such a context, anxiety attacks are very normal. But please, do not project it onto Dr. Olga. I'm not getting any younger, you know, and running this clinic is a very heavy burden. The last few years, Olga has shown she is capable of assisting me. I have every faith in her. I'm not having an anxiety attack, Doctor. When I asked Olga to let me leave, she drugged me. I know. Olga has informed me of the incident. According to her, you were unfortunately very aggressive and disturbed. And she had to inject a tranquilizer. Dr. Mangoling spoke to me about your violent tendencies. But... The subject is closed, Miss Walker. Please tell me about that pendant you have around your neck. I must admit I noticed it as soon as you walked in. It belonged to Oscar, a friend who passed away. I understand, Miss Walker. I myself have borne the weight of grief for decades now. Wearing a token from someone dear to you is a natural thing. Dr. Zamiatine, I promised Kirk I'd go to the craftsman in Valsambur and bring back his mechanical prosthesis. The poor boy has been waiting for it for ages, so I'd like to try to speed up the process. Would you tell me how to get there? Now there's a truly noble initiative, Miss Walker. I asked my clockmaker friend Simon Steiner to manufacture the young Yukol's mechanical prosthetic leg. He's a capable craftsman and ingenious. You'll find him in his workshop near the Valsambur port. I imagine he must almost be finished with his work by now. He makes amazing things. You'll see. Can you authorize my release so that I can see Dr. Steiner? Unfortunately, I've been told that the clinic is in lockdown. You will have to ask Dr. Olga, Miss Walker. She signed the current order to lock our establishment down. She's in charge of giving out the passes. This book should answer any of the questions you may have about our Yukol's friends. Farewell and bon voyage, Miss Walker. I get the impression that the Yukols aren't much liked around here. Indeed. It would seem that most of the inhabitants of Valsambor are now quite hostile towards them. This wasn't the case a while back, you know. When I was young, the migration of the snow ostriches was an event widely welcomed with open arms in Valsambor. Why the change in attitude? Our region was actually somewhat devastated 20 years ago. Dramatic events changed the way people viewed the world. The people turned inward on themselves. They are less welcoming. And the fact that the Yukols have been stuck here, next to Lake Valsambor for several weeks, hasn't helped. Why did the Yukols ask you to heal Kirk? On each of their migrations, the Yukol shamans and I have exchanged medical knowledge. Their trance therapy and materia medica have provided astounding results for my patients affected by psychological afflictions. In exchange, I do what I can to take care of those injured that they can't heal using their traditional medicine. Like, uh, that poor boy who lost his leg. How many ostrich migrations have you seen? This is the third one. I'm lucky to have seen so many of them. It's a rare spectacle. Believe me, 
The great herd of ostriches accompanied by the Yukols, doomed to blindly follow their animals wherever they happen to roam. And they don't care about countries, wars, and borders. You seem to like the Yukols, Dr. Zamiatine. They are a fascinating people, you know, and such astonishing medicine infused with shamanism. Without which, no doubt, you would have never arrived in this clinic alive, Miss Walker. It's really necessary for me to ask Olga's permission to leave? You're the director of this clinic, after all. Olga is my right-hand woman. I can't keep her uninvolved in current matters, Miss Walker. She is also currently your doctor. You should really talk with her about it. She isn't as evil as you seem to believe. You'll find her in her office, most probably. The American is awake. You must hurry, Colonel. Hmm. How is she doing? Miss Walker is rather restless. I had to administer a tranquilizer. But I'm afraid I won't be able to keep her here for very long, Colonel. She is very quickly going to become a problem. Kate Walker will always represent a problem for us, and also for our cause, Dr. Olga Efimova. I can use methods that are more... How should I put it? Medical. No. Not for the moment. That isn't a very good idea. I want her back in good condition. And what about the tribe of nomads? Just like the past few years, Leg Valsambor hasn't frozen over. So the herd can't cross the ice. They're stuck here. And also, their young guide is still in our... If everything goes as planned, Soon, the Yukuls will have no choice but to go back home. Especially as I have a plan to speed things up. Fine. There's also the American detective, Colonel. He should be arriving soon. Let him meet with Miss Walker if that's what he wants to do. No point alarming him just yet. But when all is said and done, we're the ones who are handling the young woman's case. No American is going to come here and tell us what to do. What? Where did she go? Dr. Zamiatine, excuse me, but I still really need to speak with you. Of course. What's wrong, Miss Walker? It's about Olga Efimova. Miss Walker, I mean... Uh... I promise. I am not making this up. I surprised her in the middle of a discussion with some kind of a policeman, a colonel. They want to keep me here whether I want to stay or not. God only knows why. They also talked about the Yukels. They have some kind of a plan. That's enough, Miss Walker. I've heard enough. Please, Doctor. You have to listen to- Out of the question. My poor girl, with such a terrible degree of paranoia, I should have you accompanied straight back to your room immediately. You're fortunate that I'm sympathetic towards you. But don't go too far. Please.
Hello, Mr. Fimova. I'm here to see you two. Kate Walker? It really is you! What a coincidence. I've been looking for you for weeks. Uh, Mr. Canton, I presume? Ah, I see that my reputation precedes me. Miss Efimova must have told you I was coming. No, I just now learned of your existence, Mr. Canton. A while ago, my employer in New York informed me that he was going to stick a detective on my back. I don't like to boast, but I'm the best detective on the East Coast. Never a problem with me. I've been asked to bring you back home safe and sound, Miss Walker. I should be in Valsambor in a few hours. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Mr. Canton. I'm sure that finding me hasn't been easy. Oh my god, you have no idea. I'm afraid this might upset you, but I'm not planning on going back to the United States for the moment, Mr. Canton. To be honest, you don't really have a choice. The U.S. Justice Department is looking for you, and I even have an international arrest warrant for you, Miss Walker. Who'd have thought? The Feds are looking for me? But what's the charge? I've done nothing wrong. Embezzlement! Apparently you took off with a contract for the sale of the clockwork toy factory in Vorlberg. And you took advantage of the seller's senility. You're even suspected of being responsible for the death of one of them. A Mr. Hans Vorlberg, the last heir authorized to sign contracts with the company you represented. That's not negligible. You know, Miss Walker. This is completely ridiculous. And as far as I know, you aren't authorized to represent the Justice Department in this country. You're just a detective. So you'll have to put up with it, Mr. Canton. I'm not going back to New York with you. So leave me alone! Wait, Miss Walker. Please be reasonable. Goodbye, Mr. Canton. <laughs>